Well, I just finished master debating. Now our intellectual refractory, refractory period has ended. So now we must master debate once again. Eric, would you like to shake the hat for me? We draw a topic out. And then uh, we go from there. Yeah. The true mark of an intelligent man is to uh, draw random things out of a hat and then uh, spout nonsense off about them. Let's see. That's basically all we do. That's... I like to make it obnoxious as possible, man. I notice. Mm. Oh, the lights. Left libertarian versus right libertarian. I think we already did that. A little bit. When we did capitalism. Yeah, we kind of did. Fuck it. Let's draw another one. Okay. Do you feel like we haven't covered the left versus right libertarian topic in depth in a previous video well enough? Let us know. We'll fucking do it. I don't care. We, we did all of these topics at once before we have made any of them, so some of them are just going to be overlap just because we're human beings. No, we're not. We're uh, lizards. Postmodern art. Hmm. So we went from the last art video, and the first art video we did was Renaissance. And right. We got postmodern. So, all right. Let's get our... Let's, uh... <laughs> the tricky thing about... The tricky thing about uh, postmodernism, uh, of course, is pinning down what it what actually he... fucking means. Right. <laughs> Essentially, postmodern art and literature is like a response to modernist art and literature. So let's get a definition of modernism, okay. which is more concretely defined, and then we'll get into postmodernism, and then we'll relate it just to art, because people talk about postmodern everything. So. <clears throat> I'll just read from Wikipedia because I'm uh, an intelligent, uh, an intellectual fraud. Modernism is both a philosophical movement and an art movement that arose from broad transformations in Western society during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The movement reflected a desire for the creation of new forms of art, philosophy, and social organization, which reflected the newly emerging industrial world, including features such as urbanization, new technologies, and war. Artists attempted to depart from traditional forms of art, which they considered outdated or obsolete. The poet Ezra Pound's 1934 injunction to make it new was the touchstone of the movement's approach. Modernist innovations included abstract art, the stream of consciousness novel, montage cinema, atonal and 12-tone music, and divisionist painting. I don't know what divisionism is. Modernists explicitly rejected the ideology of realism and made use of the works of the past by the employment of reprise, incorporation, rewriting, recapitulation, revision, and parody. Modernism also rejected the certainty of enlightenment thinking, and many modernists also rejected religious beliefs. A notable characteristic of modernism is self-consciousness concerning artistic and social traditions, which often led to experimentation with form, along with the use of techniques that drew attention to the processes and materials used in creating works of art. While some scholars see modernism continuing into the 21st century, others seeing it evolving with late modernism or high modernism, Postmodernism is a departure from modernism and rejects its basic assumptions. So the the right at the top is is uh, Picasso. Nice. Um, Guggenheim. Uh, Wait, aren't we are are we considered postmodern neo Marxists? I don't know. I don't fucking know. The the. Uh, the Jordan Peterson brand postmodernist neo Marxist. I mean, I don't know. Let's let's talk about postmodernism broadly, and then um, postmodernism is a broad movement that developed in the mid to late twentieth century. It calls philosophy, the arts, architecture, and criticism, making a departure from modernism. The term has been more generally applied to describe a historical area said to follow after modernity in the tendencies of the era. Postmodernism is generally defined by an attitude of skepticism, irony, or a rejection towards what it describes as the grand narrative and ideologies associated with modernism often criticizing enlightenment rationality and focusing on the role of ideology in maintaining political or economic power. Postmodernism, postmodern thinkers frequently describe knowledge claims and value systems as contingent or socially conditioned, framing them as products of political, historical, or cultural discourses and hierarchies. 
Common targets of postmodern criticism include universalist ideas of objective reality, morality, truth, human nature, reason, science, language, and social progress. Accordingly, postmodern thought is broadly characterized by tendencies to self-consciousness, self-referentiality, epistemological and moral relativism, pluralism, and irreverence. And it is blah, 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 has seeped into cultural studies, philosophy, economics, linguistics, architecture, feminist theory, literary criticism, as well as art movements such as literature, contemporary art, and music. And then there's a whole article about criticism of postmodernism. But basically, how I, my, it's a, it's, it's broad and encompassing and complex. Right. But the way I've always under, how I've always understood it in my head is there's, in the, of the 19th, of the 20th century, right? Yeah. There's a, there's a few like, um, great, big, large novels that are touted as like very hard but, like, extremely rewarding English language novels, right? And th- three of th- the three biggest ones that I always say are Ulysses by James Joyce, which came out in right. 1921, and then Gravity's Rainbow by Thomas Pynchon that came out in 73, and it's American, and then um, Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace, which came out in 96, right? So Ulysses is usually called a modern modernist novel, okay? It's about two guys going around Ireland in extreme depth and the majority of the narration is like their thought process it's stream of consciousness it's like one of the big most well regarded stream of consciousness novels ever written right right so that's that's modern that's modernist it's very like it's not it doesn't idealize or like romanticize Dublin which is where it takes place but it's very in depth and like down to earth with its characters and like the setting and shit like, there's a chapter where the guy wakes up and his wife is, like, in bed farting and he goes down to the meat market and buys a liver and brings it back and cooks it and eats it. And that's the chapter. And then, like, is what he's thinking as he's doing it, right? And he's thinking about shit in his past and all this other stuff, like, in depth. And it mimics how people actually think, so it jumps around and thoughts and all this other stuff. Okay, so that's, that's modernism. And then Gravity's Rainbow, 50 years later, is touted as postmodern, right? So it like frequently like makes fun of itself and like the narrative is extremely fractured and as like a plot it doesn't make a lot of sense uh but there will be there will also be like vast like these big long diatribes about how war affects people and all this other shit so it's it's but but at that part of what it wants to do is like just like fuck around with the idea of like a normal novel whatsoever so that's postmodernism, where like the, you're not even you're not look, even looking at the reality of it. You're tearing apart like the social idea of a painting or a book or whatever, right? That's how a lot of the time how I think about it. And then now, when you get in, Infinite Jest came out in '96, and then David Foster Wallace thought all that shit was all the postmodern like super ironic shit was really like insincere and wanky. So he was like, he tried to be more. He tried to take some of the ideas of like very complex stories and with all these different characters and like fractured narratives that jump around in time and space and stuff, but also like not do do it ironically, but like make the characters grounded and likable and all like try to be really sincere and the pros and shit. So that's sort of like a modern reaction to postmodernism. So when I when I try I think to you mean a post. Postmodernist yeah, reaction, yeah. Postmodern, yeah. It doesn't have it. Some people call it post postmodernism. It doesn't have a or unified transmodernism term. or yeah. post millennialism, yeah, or whatever. But in my head, that's like the the short and sweet way I sort of like break apart these very hard to understand and vaguely defined nebulous like movements, right? Um, with these three books, because that's one of the mediums I'm most familiar with is, and I know all these three books pretty well. So. To make a long story short, I find that a, a useful way to think about each of them uh, with those as, like, touchstones. But I think when we wrote postmodern art, we mostly meant, like, painting and sculpture and there's performance art. Right. So, like, it. a lot of the postmodern, like, art is, like, all these dudes who will, like, put a toilet on display and be like, this is art. Well, the, I think the one you're thinking, oh, God, who did that? I can't remember. That one's actually a little bit earlier. 
1917. Yeah, it's almost like a... It was literally a urinal. Yeah, it's like a... Yeah, I'm yeah. Just, just kind of making a... I'm just looking at this, like... This article. Yeah, no. I know the one you're talking about, and it's that one is, like, commonly under... I, I want to refer to it by the right name. Or the guy who... What, did he nail the banana to the wall? Like, well, like, that's new. That's, like, brand new, right? Yeah. yeah. That's, like, postmodern art, though. <laughs> it kind of is, yeah. Did it sell for, like, $1.7 or something? But it's also... it's There's also elements of... Okay, it's called Fountain. Yes. By Duchamp. Okay. Um, you know, I'll put it on screen, but you've seen it before. It's... That one is a lot of time more thought of as modernist, but with the okay, my pro, this, the the trouble with um, like painting and sculpture and shit is almost these words apply like modernism and postmodernism apply differently. Right. To me, it's way easier to understand the concepts when they apply to like fiction and like narrative. So, okay, so here's the problem with like postmodern art, right? Is there so many things that feed into being like because postmodern is like. A like this weird umbrella term. Yes, just how modernism was too. But right, yes. but because you get all these like you got all these things with pop art and it's not a it, it is not a neo expression. It's not an aesthetic. Right. It's not even a style or an aesthetic. It's no. like a it's a it's a thought process. Right. Um. But but a lot of like the banana thing and the fucking fountain by Duchamp the. The point of them is to, like, take the piss, kind of. Right. Yeah. And here's one that's just, like, vacuum cleaners. Yeah. But, so, um, what's this one guy? There's guy. there's people I know and I can't remember their name, but. Oh, yeah, okay, James Terrell. James Terrell's kind of neat. So one of, some of these some of these things that are cool are these light art shows. Yeah. Where it's like the set is like built up for you to walk through or mm-hmm. like observe, but it's all based on like how the light interacts with the different objects and shit in it. Right. And that's obviously, you know, a mostly newer form of art that can even exist with like electricity and all these complex different kinds of light. But, uh... James Terrell in specific. I've never... Unfortunately, there's some element of this, like, you have to... More than even some other stuff, you have to, like, be there to, like, get it as the full experience, because it, right. it's how it interacts with your eyes and everything else. But uh, based on what I've... This shit that I've seen, it's... it's uh, this stuff's really interesting. But that's a perfect example of, like... A uh, hundred years ago, you know, I don't think there's any, like, candle artists doing candle light in a certain way to, like, you know what I mean? I doubt it. But yes, the the that's one of the main criticisms of postmodernism. Where even modernism was like a little bit more grounded with like a sort of aesthetic and thought process to the art. Where let me look at just Google image like modernist painting. Um, or postmodernism is more just like uh, reject everything, no fucks given. So right. there, there's le- it's it has even less of a stylistic or aesthetic grounding and more just like of a certain mindset. It's not like it's not even like you can. I mean, maybe the really educated art scholars can, but like, I mean, I could look at a painting and be like, "Oh, that's a postmodern painting." You know what I mean? Right. Maybe I'm a little bit uneducated on that front, which is probably true to an extent. But at the same time, um, that's part of the that's part of the appeal. Is like like not attaching to any stylistic laws or rules or not any narrative rules or anything. Just but yeah, modernist art is like what's funny is that a lot of people criticize like there's like this broader idea that like modern art is like bad or or whatever. But a lot of a lot of these people would point to like art from a hundred years ago and be like, you know, I could see some of these anti-modern art people like being like that's not art he just made a bunch of blues 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 and squares I'll put it on screen but uh you have to I don't know who it's by I feel like the an issue with 
too much of this modern art and like postmodern art is there's too much explanation that has to go into it. That's fair. Makes sense. Like yeah. If, like like it's you, increasingly insular. Yeah. Right. If you have to explain it to me for me to understand what you're like, what I'm looking at, like there's an issue there. Like I should just be able to look at it and understand it. Like with all the Renaissance paintings that we looked at. Generally, I fairly quickly understood what was going on in it. There's some truth to that. I'll, I'll, uh... Like, a, so, there's this piece called Untitled Film Still Still 21. There's, like, a whole paragraph, like, explaining to me <laughs> what's going on in it. The series, so... First it's by the, Cindy Sherman. By, by Cindy way. Sherman. Um... Uh, the series emerged into a second wave of feminism in which female representation, particularly in cinema, was being questioned. Sherman ironically positions herself both within and outside this media, providing a critique of the notion of a fixed feminine role through her reflexive technique and also subjecting representation itself to question. Must women always be shown as victims and martyrs? By bringing this question to the foray, she reduces the power of representations of women. How? How taking a? I understand. So, I understand. She was the photographer and the subject. Okay, I get that. But how does like any of how does that? How do you get all of that out of that? Well, I'm not sure on that one because I'm not familiar with that one. But, Neither am I. But, but I'm uh, just saying like yeah, no, I, that's a, and that's a common and like fair criticism, right? I will let me play devil's advocate here. So when you when it comes to a religious Renaissance painting, right? Right. Um. There, there's a more to us. There's a more clear aesthetic beauty in something like that than a lot of the newer, um, you know, even these. This is modernism. I'm looking at Jackson Pollock, Picasso's cubist shit, right? There's a there's a more clear aesthetic appeal in that stuff than anything made in the like the last hundred years that falls in these categories, right? Yeah, that's fair. That's understandable. Truly, the fall of Western civilization. Um, there's also, but there's also, there is an element of explanation that. We understand already, like intrinsically for the most part, by knowing, by being of the Christian mindset, right? I guess. Like being raised around Christianity, right? So, although there is less explanation, part of the appeal of these is that they represent like this, this religious worldview or they represent these religious stories that you believe to be true and now you can put a visual to them. So that is part of the appeal of those, you know what I mean? Where... Part of what makes them, part of what makes them like universally stand out in our eyes is that backdrop. Where if an alien came and you know, I some fucking alien came and looked at it, it might not be even if they had the same aesthetic taste as like human beings do. They the appeal of the religiosity of it might be a little bit different, right? But broadly, I think your criticism is extremely fair. But I will I'll also say like. I don't think that, um, I don't think anyone has, like, I'm trying to think of how to say this. I don't think, when it does need explanation, right, it is, it is definitely, uh, makes it harder to appreciate for, like, an outsider, right? Right. And these, a lot of these art movements and credit, like, the entire community is extremely insular. It can be, for sure. And that's not the best thing in the world. No. I agree. But also, like, there's there's truth to the fact that, like, if a... I'm trying to think of, like, a good example. Like, with every media... Like, everything you can do, like carpentry or fucking making cars or anything, there's also... There's always, like, a higher or, like, more abstract level that, like, a, a bottom-level person just doesn't get, right? Or even, like, a novel, right? Yeah. The most, like, like the average person doesn't read the most complex books that are ever written, right? Because, right. like, it's just, like, too hard to penetrate. But for the people that, like, they that's what they spend their time doing or they spend their time writing these complex books and reading other complex books, yes, it is ex- extremely insular and hard to get into, and that's a fair thing to point out. But at the same time, the appeal is understandable when, like, that's your livelihood, right? Like, if, if all you do is, can like, if you're an art person right and all you do is is make and consume art like this this 
movement makes way more sense just because like here when you go to the gallery you're not like oh let me see like the the 10,000th aesthetically pleasing painting of this some fruit or whatever you know that's not what you find interesting at that point you know what i mean necessarily so this shit like makes sense but it is overly exclusionary for the most part i agree i'm not even saying your criticism's wrong right like i said i'm just playing devil's advocate it makes sense to me where it comes from and I, like there's some things that like i i don't know what you're you're scrolling through the fucking the art story thing. I bet if I went through that list, I, don't, I haven't seen most of the ones you're scrolling past. I bet some of them are like, oh, that's pretty interesting. And the other one's like, I don't give a fuck. Right. Right. I don't know what my grander point is, but basically just like it may, it may, the, the idea of it makes sense to me, even if it's harder to appreciate, like just on a out, like from a completely outside perspective. It's almost like the, 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 the art, like visual art people and movement is like moving is just peeking past where like the average person is being able to appreciate it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But there's not enough. This is just the most famous art. Like this is what the the rich people are buying, right? Right. Uh, I'm not, I'm not in, in super well educated on it. So I'm, I'm probably making myself sound like a little bit of a fucking dumbass. But part of, part of like what makes art, the most famous art, the most famous is what rich people will spend on it. Right. Right. Whereas like the most famous book or movie is just the one that like the most people like, but most people don't buy million dollar paintings. No. So what, what, um, makes a painting famous is inherently related to like the love, this level that it's at. Right. Mm -hmm. But most people don't want to consume art at this level. They want to consume it like here. You know what I mean? Or somewhere, you know, there, there's a spectrum. Right. Uh, I think that's part of why the visual art... Because, like, w- postmodern movies exist that are, like, t- like 12 hours of literal-ass paint drawing. And they, like, people in, like, the idea that it exists, like, people give it awards and shit, right? But no, who, no most people aren't going to watch that because they don't give a fuck. No. But if all you do is, like, watch, consume, and think about and make movies, then, like... That fucking, this mad light actually did this shit. You know what I mean? There's like something inherently like based about that. But since there's also normie movies, you know, Paul Joseph Watson isn't bitching about 12 hour paint drying movies, but Paul Joseph Watson or whatever right wing reactionary will bitch about how modern art is the the downfall of Western civilization. But I think it's because visual art, what makes it famous is part of it is what makes it famous is that it's like inherently related to like it's a rarity or like you know what high level it's at that it'll get paid a lot of money for right sorry for like going off on a fucking gigantic tangent I didn't mean to but it's whatever I also think some of this like postmodern art's a little bit too on the nose like the yes I shop therefore I am by Barbara Kruger now it was in 1987 so I'll give it a little bit of credit but yes this is this is not doing anything for me, right? Like it's just like, like, obviously. I feel like insulted by it. Yeah, it looks like the Supreme logo. <laughs> it kind of does, but it says here. Uh, I mean, like the statement "I shop, therefore I am" subverts Rene Descartes' philosophical claim. I think, therefore, I am. Critically referring to the notion that consumerism rather than human agency is now the force that shapes identity. What you buy, not your inner life, makes you who you are. The work thus underscores in a stark manner the new focus on image and spectacle. A person's value and identity runs no deeper than the surface, encompassing their purchases and the labels they wear. Wow, bro, that's deep. That's deep. So that's a that's a good example because that's about as deep as a kiddie pool. <laughs> I say that's a good ex- that's a good example because there's like. Truth to it, but also at the same time, it's so pretentious. And well, it's not even that it's pretentious. It's I don't mind the well. The pretension comes in where the visual art has nothing to do with the shit, right? Right. Like it doesn't bother. Like I'm trying to think of a good example. Like the fountain by Duchamp doesn't bother me because, like, it's like you know the you kind of need the story for it to make. For like its presence as an as a piece of art to make sense, 
But also, like, it's not just, like, a black and white hand with, like, red text over it. You know what right. I mean? So, I have another kind of uh, criticism here. So many of these that I'm looking at are considered untitled, but have, like, a title in parentheses next to it. So, why not just use the title of that's in the parentheses? Also, this, this one is just, like, looks like a stack of paper towels, I think. Oh, gee. Look at it. But a lot of what gets called like postmodern art by some people is uh they're yeah, uneducated okay. because all right, it's... all right, all right, all right, all right. So what looks to be like a mere stack of like paper towels of some kind. Yeah. Uh, the work of Cuban artist Felix Gonzalez Torres addresses many postmodernism issues, including originality, the importance of the viewer, the concern with minority identities, and the ephemeral nature of art. Untitled Lover Boy is a stack of paper from which visitors are encouraged to take a piece. The installation instructions give specific dire- okay to maintain the stack at a certain weight, while the pile shrinks on a daily basis as visitors with some trepidation take paper from the pile. It is restored to its full size each morning. Thus, there is no solid, commoditized, always existing work of art in the traditional sense. It is reconstructed each installation site with new paper and the entire piece reconstituted. The work thus questions originality and authorship while involving the viewer very profoundly in the meaning of the work, which is about the death of Gonzalez Torres' lover Ross from AIDS. As the weight of the pile of paper shrinks each day, this diminution represents Ross's wasting away from the AIDS virus, which he died from two years after the work was first shown. Thus, the piece also deals with issues important to the LGBT community, a minority group whose people whose rights were just beginning to be recognized. How? Okay, so, so that's a, I'm glad that you said this one because I've never heard of it. Okay, so I think I'm a little bit more postmodern pretentious than you when it comes to art, right? Okay. A little bit, right? So Probably. The first half of that, I'm with it, right? Okay. I don't think it's like the most profound work. It's like, it's, it's when you said involves the viewer profoundly, I was like, well, I don't know how profound it is. But it's like interesting that the art is like dudes taking paper, right? Okay. And it's reconstructed everywhere. Okay. So in, if you reconstruct art, like it's inherently, there's some element of like the originality is lost. Blah blah blah. That's it. That in itself is Some interesting. Ship too, of Theseus type. Shit. Yeah, like like I get it. Like it's neat, right? But then it's like the pre- there is pretension attached to it. It's like, but the stack of paper also represents the wasting away of my lover as they die from AIDS. Like, but okay, but where though? Like, may, like what if like uh, the stack of paper was every sheet? Or something had like something that this person said throughout their life, right? Right. That it was even something small like that would like make that make more sense. Right. It's like a stack of blank paper, right? Right. And people Pretty take, much. yeah, like there's not anything on it. No, I don't, think. I don't think so. Or like if it was an image of, if it was an image of him, it's like well, it's about how someone I love died in this painful, shitty way, and people that happens to people all the time, and they commodify it as art. And then people consume it. So if I put a picture of my lover who died and everyone's taking a piece every single day, then it's like that gets that at that point or a different point better than the, the, the second half of that paragraph you read is like incredibly pretentious. He's like, no, as, and I don't even like to use the word pretentious because I think it's overused for the most part. But sometimes shit is pretentious. Right. And that was, it's kind of like, okay, but where though? That's just like you had made this weird performance art thing and then also your lover was dying of AIDS so they have to be the same thing, I guess. Right. It's just like a meme. Yes. But anyway, I'm scrolling through this modernist art and like, okay, like if, like, this was painted in 1916, right? This Monet, uh, Water Lilies by Monet. Okay. Like, most of these people would be like, that's not art. You know what I mean? That's like modernist. That's modernist art. That's like modernist art. Yeah, like it's expressionist. Yeah. Impressionism, not expressionist. Sorry. Or like, uh, what's this other one? I never seen this one. Black Square by Kazimir Malevich. Malevich. Anyway, this is kind of sick. I like it, but it's also like you know. But I but modernism sort of you, when you distill like where do you go after this right? 
like if this is the this is the visual representation of your your art, right? Like post the fact that postmodernism goes where it's gonna go makes sense because when this is what you're coming off of, right? Right. Like a generation came up like this is the new and unique art, so like where do you go? It's like a paper, I guess. (laughs) You know what I mean? Right. What am I? Well, I don't. I won't. I might as well. Might as well talk about. I'm on the modernism page. Uh, Dadaism is part of is a modernist movement, and it's like it's like cutting shit out of other shit, and like this weird like surrealist like smashing together of elements that really shouldn't go together in like a unique way. And a lot of the the Dadaist art is like sick. I don't know when we're gonna talk about modernism besides. In relation to this, so we might, might as well, I thought I might as well fucking bring it up, but <laughs> or putting bug eyes on the Mona Lisa, <laughs> you know that kind of shit. Right. It's like fuck you, fuck your art. Do you know about Piss Christ? No. This one's interesting because we our last video, well, one of the last time we recorded videos, we did one about religion. And people always, you know, they get up in arms about religion. So Piss Christ is a crucifix in a jar of piss. <laughs> and I actually like the photo a lot. <laughs> like, I like the photo. Uh, <laughs> but, of course, religious people got mad as fuck. <laughs> it's like come Rainbow Dash. So, okay. Oh, you're just going to completely ignore what I just said? <laughs> I was trying, yeah. So, um, the work generated a large amount of controversy based on the assertions that it was blasphemous. Serrano himself said of the controversy, it's it's immersion piss Christ mm-hmm. by Andre Serrano, an American artist. I had no idea piss Christ would get the attention it did since I meant neither blasphemy nor offense by it. I've been a Catholic all my life, so I am a follower of Christ. Okay, how did you not know, though? People get mad about it. But, uh... So, I guess the photograph was one of a series of photographs he did that involved classical statuettes submerged in various fluids. Milk, blood, and urine. It's two years after Blood Cross. Is it... It's a plexiglass cross filled with cow blood. Yeah. When I first, when I, it doesn't even look like a photo to me. I guess, I mean, it's a photograph, so maybe they'll, it's just a low quality image here on Wikipedia, but anyway, I like this Christ. I like the, I like the visual of it, and I like that it's a fucking crucifix in a jar of piss, and I like that people got mad about it. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> you know what I mean? It just depends. The photograph is, like, it's so incredible to me. Like, I okay, I guess if I have a stance on postmodern artists, that, like, I will, like, I will defend it to my dying breath because I will, because if it gives me piss Christ, it's worth the pretension in that second paragraph, you know what I mean? Right. Like, it, I mean, well, I, there's also this, I feel like there's a, a notion that, like, among, like, if you're willing to look at any postmodern art, then you must like all of it, right? Right. And the truth is, like, everyone has their own taste, just like anything. Like, nobody likes every movie they watch. Nobody likes every painting they look at. You know what I mean? But it should be a lot. Like, it, it should exist, and I'm glad people make it, because it can be interesting. But, uh, you know. I am interested to see, like, what happens in, like, the next 50 years in, like, the, the, visual, the visual arts, just because... Uh, certainly this new mo- post postmodernist era will have a name and like a defined mindset and shit. I'm just interested to see where it goes. Right. Uh, Piss Christ was on display in 2012. Religious groups and some lawmakers called for President Barack Obama to denounce the artwork, comparing it to the anti-Islamic film Innocence of Muslims that the White House had condemned earlier that month. Yeah, but you should be allowed to do that, too. Don't censor shit, ever. Please. Censorship by religion. I 
I think Andy Warhol's my favorite, like, postmodernist artist. Yeah. Understandable. He's a, he's almost, like, right in the middle, kind of, a yeah. lot of the time. Um, what's cool, I mean, what's cool about Warhol is just that, like, he generated enough money to, like, finance all of these uh, yeah other artists who would otherwise probably not get noticed, so... He had himself like a little art collective thing going, which is pretty sick. No, that's like the coolest fucking thing ever. Oh, this is neat, right? This is um, created in nineteen ninety one. So it's it's basically just the the Talmud, the Bible, and the Quran. Uh, all of them cut, are cut in half and encased in glass together. Okay. Like neat. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Sure. It's, it's not a, I mean, I'm, it's not, it's, it doesn't aesthetically appeal to me, but uh, once you know what it is, I guess if you just see it, but with a, with a one sentence explanation, you know what I mean? If you can explain it in like one to three sentences, then sick. If it takes more than that, then you, you have to, yeah, it better be like, there better be something pretty cool about it, you know what I mean? Right. Otherwise people are not going to attach to it. Hmm. So I guess it was gonna he his work was gonna it's by it's called God is Great Number Two by John Latham by the way I don't know if I said that but uh it was gonna be on display in late 2005 and early 2006 and then there was a in the wake of the seven July 2005 bombings on the London transport system carried out by Islamic militants militants um, they decided not to include the piece and. Uh, there was like a, I don't know, British Muslim commentator Yasmin Ali Pai Brown criticized their decision to withdraw the work from display, arguing that it reflected the assumption that all Muslims were intolerant and volatile, uh, which is probably true. It probably did did more negative for the community than it did provide anybody safety. Right. Seeing a lot of people, a lot of like postmodernist art that deals with like blatant consumerism. Like, okay. It's again with like the pretension part of it to me. <laughs> like, oh, I'm so deep. I'm anti consumerist. I don't know. I don't think Dolly was. Postmodern. Uh, no, I don't think so either. He was just a surrealist. Um, You're a surrealist. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, where, like, what are some of these dated? The the uh, consumerist ones. Because they like eighties and stuff. Because that the late eighties is really when that like became like the mainstream young persons like there was criticism of of consumerism shit before that for sure obviously but like it's almost take it for granted right like with us now today um that like the our entire society is extremely consumerist and materialistic so therefore like art about it seems that like comes off as like appearing to be deep like feels like like pretentious right Right. I mean, I'm not saying that it's not. I mean, you should you can judge it as a 2020 person, but I think that's really when that wave started in art. So it was a lot more new back then. But you know, if the if the art isn't substantive substantive enough, I can never say that word. And I try every fucking video. Substantive. Yes. Um. To reflect the ideas that you're trying to show, then. Yeah, it can it can be tenuous, for sure. In 1996, Walter Truett Anderson described postmodernism as belonging to one of four typological worldviews, which he identifies as a postmodern ironist, which sees the truth as socially constructed, scientific rational, in which truth is defined through methodical, disciplined inquiry, social traditional, in which truth is found in the heritage of American and Western civilization, neo romantic, in which truth is found through attaining harmony with nature or spiritual exploration of the inner self. 
Okay, I got a question. Just interesting. So, Lawrence Weinars, a rubber ball thrown on the sea, is literally just a sentence. On a, on a wall. On a wall. In sans serif font. Blue. How is that art? I mean, I guess the question the the question isn't how is that art. It's just the question is how do you prescribe meaning to this art? How do you prescribe meaning into it? Is a better question. Well, the the problem the the is that art question is they're saying art's a value judgment when you can't art's like indefinable, right? I guess. So something being art doesn't make it good. Like art's just human expression. Right. It's like that four chan post. That's like what everything is art nowadays. This this. Uh, this post, post is this now post art. Is art, and it's, people have it framed and sold. Right. But yes, I don't get it either. I don't get the appeal of it. It doesn't. It doesn't do anything for me. I don't find it interesting. But uh, at the same time, I'm not gonna. I can't be like. I kind of like stand there and be like, I get it. Yeah, like I don't. I can't. I can't be like. Oh, that's so cool. It's brother. disingenuous. Yeah. It's disingenuous for you to stand there and just be like, huh, I really get it. Just stroke your chin like, hmm. Let me, let me look that I feel up. Like half, I feel like half of this modern art shit is just for art critics to stand there and like mentally masturbate about how they get it. Like, oh, I'm so much smarter than these plebs because I get it. There's definitely some people that are like that. I agree. Let me see. The one thing I will say uh, with postmodern art, min- minimalism is like my shit. Yeah. Yeah. Minimalism is cool. Hell yeah. Um, okay, well, I can't find it. So, it's an article about a rubber ball thrown on the sea from the Washington Post in 2010. And it says, the words evoke an absurd image of an absurd act, or at least a very humble one. Why commemorate an art in action that's hardly worth doing or noting? Earlier in his career, Weiner may have suggested that his artwork was complete only once someone actually carried out the throw it describes. So I'm okay. A famous work from 1968, a wall cratered by a single shotgun blast, blasts a mess into the drywall each time that it's displayed. I don't know if that's by him, though. It's unclear based on this to me, and I can't find it. A wall cratered. Maybe that's why. Is that all this and pretty much all this guy does? Maybe. Anyway. So okay. So let's say not that I not that a a rubber ball thrown onto onto the sea, right? Is yeah. like very interesting. Right. But right. let's say you're like in 1968, you're like, alright, I'm gonna do a piece of art that's a sentence describing a wall being cracked by a shotgun blast. Then I'm going to shoot the wall with the shotgun. Like, is that art? Right? right. Like, what's the limit of art? And it's like, well, okay, so 40 years later, you're like, all right, well, what if I just say some other shit that, like, some people, like, will do, I guess. But there's no crater in the wall. Like, is that art? Like, where's the, you know, not even saying, like I'm saying. It's a, there's a lot of it that's, like, fucking masturbatory, like, pushing the limits of what you can call art and it's not even inherently that interesting but you know there's a, there's some sort of narrative through line that exists regardless of how much meaning it actually, actually adds to the shit right yeah I kind of find postmodern art a little boring can be yeah I mean I guess one of the major tenets of postmodern art is it's supposed to be impersonal and like semi unoriginal right but it kind of takes away a lot of the value for me with art. Personally. Post post structuralism. What? It's... We're just. Man, you're just throwing out buzzwords. <laughs> I 
But yes, there's uh, there's definitely an element of impersonality to it that can make it hard to attach to. Like, okay, well, let me put it this way. I find a lot of postmodern art interesting, but God forbid that it would be the only kind of art that existed, right? Like, no right. fucking thank you. <laughs> right. I don't think postmodern art could exist as... Well, no, like, it could That's thing. part of the point, right? Right. I don't... I mean, that's why, that's why it's so hard to sell people on this, right? Right. Because if you're, you have to be, you have to be pretty aware. You have to be pretty entrenched in art as a move, as a medium and like as a movement in order to like even begin to get some of this. You know what I mean? Right. Which is a, for the people who can get into it is like what makes it interesting. But for the, an outsider, it's like inherently like report, like repels you. Right. So, Yeah. That's why that's why it's so criticized as a movement compared to some of the other shit. But also, it's the most modern movement. So then we're not, we're actually alive during the contemporary criticism of it. But no, I just want to. I'm glad that as a movement it exists and it's doing shit that I sometimes find interesting. And also, what's cool now about the digital age is that like you don't have to go to a museum to see some cool art, right? Right. Like, it would be a lot more understandable to be upset about postmodern art if, like, you couldn't see anything else anymore, you know what I mean? But it's not really the case, so. The more, the merrier, in my opinion, for the most part. Yeah, sure. But then, yeah, postmodernism fucking bleeds into philosophy and urban planning. (laughs) Right. And every fucking thing else, that's a whole other thing, though. Well, we've been going for almost an hour, besides what I cut out. But, uh, yeah, and it's got its own. I want to see if there's a. Yeah, you know, like, even on a. If you go on to, like. Too many art movements turn into, like, philosophical movements, too. You mean they. Like, you don't, you don't really see too much, like, post-impressionist philosophy, you know what I mean? I don't think so. Well, let me see. I'm uneducated. I mean, I'm just saying because it doesn't exist. I know, I'm just, well, I'm just going to post-impressionism because I know it doesn't, but... Because, like, their whole art style and everything was not their philosophy on life. <laughs> Well, and these things aren't even necessarily attached. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, sometimes there is there is attachment, but like the postmodernist philosophy doesn't necessarily come out of statements by postmodern artists. It's just all of the same right. mindset of like uh, everything's relative, structures a meme, morality's a meme, everything's a fucking meme. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which I guess, like, if you if you put a gun to my head, like, I I agree, everything's a fucking spook and a phantasm, right? But right. that doesn't mean that as as phantasms they don't have value or like aesthetic words, right? Right. Which I don't think most people would say anyway. Maybe some. I'm not aware of the the statements made by a lot of these artists or whatever, but yeah, credit postmodernism is one of the only Wikipedia. Like the art movement pages with a criticism page, so it's definitely like, yeah, it has been suggested that postmodernism is a mere buzzword that means nothing. That might be true. I'm not even saying that it's not. Marxian right. criticisms, mumbo jumbo. What the fuck is mumbo jumbo? It's mumbo jumbo. Francis Ween's book How Mumbo Jumbo Conquered the World broadly critiques a variety of non-critical paradigms with a significant critique of cultural relativism and the use of postmodern tropes to explain all modern geopolitical phenomena. Yeah, like, uh, I don't even, I don't know how much I agree with the criticism of it I've heard before. A lot of the time it's just that it exists, it's out there. Right. The dialogue is interesting, too. I mean, I I wouldn't want to be entrenched in it, but, uh. No, I'm not, I'm not out here, like. The fact that, like, the argument about, like, you know, people are arguing about the art adds it. 
you know, adds a layer to it that doesn't exist otherwise, you know what I mean? Right. Which is which can be neat. So at least he gets people talking about it. Yeah. So I'm trying to remember what other art it's just funny that we got Renaissance, which is some of the oldest that's on our list, I think, or one of the oldest. And then we got postmodern. Next time we do an art one, which is like the most recent. So, right. Anyway, I, I to... think that's like the only two art ones we have in there. Is there? I thought there was a couple more, but maybe oh. I'm, maybe I'm wrong. If there's postmodern art you think is cool, or you love postmodern art, or you think it's the worst thing in the world, put it in the comments. Suggest art movements for us to put in the hat. Next time on Master Debaters. You want to call us frauds. Yeah, that's what we are. We're educating ourselves. Yes. We're going... the the, the when, Whenever we stop doing Master Debaters, it will serve as a as us educating ourselves on every topic in existence. Basically. Yeah. We're doing it. We're doing it for our own brains, and we just record it so you, you can watch. It's masturbatory. Yeah. I, it's masturbatory, fittingly. Pretty much, yeah. Next time. <laughs>